Hi, this is Isabel Litzler. Welcome to my channel. So today I wanted to make a video which is really inspir inspired by an article that I wrote called Three Networking Secrets to Get Three uh, Contacts in Three Months. So I want you to take this as a challenge for yourself to get those three contacts in the next three months. So you have plenty of time. Uh, I do believe in networking in this channel. I've done a lot of videos. I think it's probably the best way to get to your objective, whether it be to find your dream job, to find your, uh, your dream business partner or grow your business or anything else that you desire. I really feel that networking will definitely save some time and effort to get there uh, as opposed to try to do it on your own. So it's definitely something that I've realized through my uh, working career. And this is why I invest all this time sharing now uh, in my YouTube channel and in my written uh, articles how to do it because I want people to get the same type of opportunities that I had thanks to networking. So in my blog article, basically, um, so the three tips are for me uh, essential to get to your objective. And I think it's based on research also from people really uh, address the topic. So the first networking um, tip that I give is on the size of the events to attend. So in general, people will go for conferences and things like that. And again, I'm not saying you shouldn't attend these because they can be great uh, learning material and you meet new faces, etc. I am all for uh, conferences. However, I found myself, so uh, in the article I refer to the research, but I also found the same type of experience myself is that in bigger events, you don't necessarily meet people. You will talk to people, you will exchange on a superficial level, maybe you exchange uh, LinkedIn profiles, but I've rarely done business or really grown my career after I uh, meet people in big events. So um, again, it was good learning, uh, maybe I learned more from the actual event itself, but I haven't really built great networking contacts after a big event. So my recommendation would be to go more towards the smaller events and uh, 10 or less than 10 seems to be the magical number. Because in smaller events, as I say in the article, you tend to be recommended by somebody, maybe a friend uh, will, uh, will recommend you to someone on the spot there, the host will encourage. I know I've gone to smaller events where usually the host will introduce everybody or you have a time when they say, okay, everyone introduce each other. So the uh, it, it's definitely encouraged from people to actually share a little bit more than if you were in a bigger event where there's no introduction. So the introduction part, I think, happens more in smaller events. The second tip that I give in my article is about expanding your horizons. So I will refer at the end of this video to creating opportunities, uh, and I, I've done the creating opportunity presentation before I actually saw the research, but I find that it's so true that by expanding your uh, horizons, by going out of your comfort zone, this is when you get the best opportunities. So don't hesitate to go outside of what you know, meet people that you wouldn't necessarily meet usually. Um, you know, go to this event where maybe it's not really your thing, but it takes you out of the house. Uh, especially if you're new to a country and you need to expand as an objective to get to know people, just simple as that. We're not even talking about a job objective or anything, just to get to know your community. So I find that expanding your horizons uh, works very well. So the feedback I get from expat is, well, my wife or my husband worked in Geneva, let's say, so I'm not looking outside of Geneva, which I understand. I mean, you're you want to keep the family together. However, now that we live in a digital, uh, long distance type of environment, chances are, you know, you probably will have the interview with someone in Zurich or in Bern or something like that. So don't hesitate to apply for jobs, even if they're not in your community, because for the right person, there's always possibilities to be flexible. So if I'm recruiting someone and the person is based, you know, on the other side of Switzerland, I don't think it's a barrier as long as there's a, a possibility to do maybe work from home or something like that. So if you have the skills and you know you're the perfect person for the job, I would really try to think a little bit broader than just the location. I think location is very much uh, 19th century. I think now... Uh, in the digital age, you can work from anywhere. And if a company, especially if it's a company that's uh, high tech or things like that, 
I don't think location is going to be an issue. And you see more and more now in job listings where it says uh, location can be, and they list several cities. So I wouldn't really not apply for a job just because uh, you think location is a problem. So think about that next time when you're trying to limit yourself geographically. Uh, and tip number three on networking, uh, which is really my favorite. There's no research on this one. It's uh, my experience. I've used it this summer and it worked very well for me to expand my network. I use a, a tool called Shaper. And Shaper is basically uh, a little bit easier to network, I find, than LinkedIn because LinkedIn has this uh, in-mail type of situation where at some point you either maximize your number of in-mails or people are not necessarily willing to talk to you if you're outside of their environment. So for expats, in my view, it can be complicated, especially knowing the Swiss culture where people tend to be a bit, bit worried about who you are if you're not from their community. So I find that Shaper takes all these barriers away. So people who are on there tend to be very much 21st century digital natives, as we call them, a globe, um, locals and all that. So. They're very much in a mindset, uh, as I was saying earlier in my uh, second networking tip of open your horizons. You know, you can meet the right uh, connections anywhere. It's always going to bring you value. They have that mindset already, which is huge because in most places now, people don't have that mindset. They're still very much about their communities and people they've known since high school, etc. So on Shaper, you do find those digital international type of people, a lot of entrepreneurs. So if you want to meet those CEOs, maybe that are in specific industries, this is a great place to be. So uh, if you need help with this uh, Shaper type of uh, app, if you're not quite comfortable how to use it, or you don't know how that can bring you value in terms of your career, feel free to book a call with me. I'll post the link below. This is definitely something that uh, can really speed up your career, get you to the next level, especially if you're foreign. Again, it's not resolving the work permit issue, but it's giving you opportunities to talk to people outside of your uh, surroundings without spending a lot of money. Because, you know, I I'll usually advise people to travel to meet in person in Switzerland, but, you know, it's it's hard to do financially, etc. So Shaper takes a lot of that problem away in my view and again i've used it this summer to build up a little bit more networking contacts it's worked great for me um you know again i, I would only encourage you to use that as uh, my networking tip number three to get those new contacts so if you have any questions feel free to ask below whether it be on networking careers entrepreneurship uh happy to reply and, um, and let me know also if there's some topics that you want to know more about. Happy to make a video as well. Thanks.